So, a year has passed since my first fateful review of this series, and now it's back. Bigger and, um, well, I hesitate to say better, so bigger than ever. It is, of course, the BBC's one and only Robin Hood. My initial review of this series seemed to cause, cause a stir amongst its fans and critics alike. Overall, I got positive feedback for it, bizarrely enough, which of course spurred me on to rant about more TV shows. So this feels oddly like coming full circle, almost like coming home. Much to my insincere distress, I managed to completely miss the first two episodes of this series, but since then I've recorded and watched four or five of them, and here are my thoughts. Deep in the heart of England, there lives a legend. That's right, the powers that be have finally forked out for a proper title sequence for this series. And proper they are! Properly hilarious! <laughs> I'd, it looks like some kind of glamorous calendar, with the posing and dramatic lighting. I mean, it does the job. Um, from those titles, there's no way in hell I could be in two minds about what I was watching. But they are very funny. The unexplained eye randomly popping open. What the hell is that? Is it meant to be Robin's? Because his eyes aren't green, are they? His eyes... They're not that colour. I mean, nobody's eyes are that colour. And it just looks like it's been ripped off from Jekyll. Except that on Jekyll it had some sort of vague significance to the plot. And uh, on Robin Hood it's just for the sake of pretension. I will admit, though, that um, the theme tune is very good, and this is something I didn't mention last time, mainly because I was senselessly ranting. But um, the theme tune is really good, and extremely catchy, annoyingly so. Um, I, I have it in my head as we speak. I also quite like the little random clips that were worked in, um, especially the one of the sheriff with his gob open. That made me laugh. The thing is, and um, I'm saying this as a criticism of the show overall, there is no way I am going to be convinced that Nottingham looks like that. I live near Nottingham. I go to Nottingham on a semi-regular basis. And whilst there are some very pretty parts of it, you're also quite likely to get knifed. Sherwood Forest has been over-romanticised to the point where it's ridiculous. I mean, even the dirt looks clean. So, the big question. How has Robin Hood changed since last year? Well, obviously, all the storylines have moved on. The Sheriff has firmly established himself as a pantomime baddie. Guy of Gisborne has found himself a spy slash bitch. Marion is now stropping around the castle, occasionally making passes at Guy. And Robin has turned into an emo stalker. Oh, and Much has become a wife. Actually, I kind of saw that one coming. Also, I don't know whether I'm more aware of this because Torchwood has polluted me, or because it is more predominant in this series, but I can no longer watch Robin Hood without seeing Hoye everywhere. I am willing to bet my bottom dollar that somewhere someone is writing Sheriff Guy Slash. One of the biggest changes that I noticed is that apparently all the romantic tension between Robin and Marion has disappeared. Whatever relationship they once had is now rather formulaic. Generally, each week she has some sensible idea to help the merry fools along, which will cause Robin to go, no, no, no. That is too dangerous. You are a woman. You must be safe. Which leads to her flouncing off and doing it anyway. At which point he goes all emo stalker and watches her make eyes at Guy. Which does happen every episode and sometimes to bizarrely useful effect. The dialogue is yet again chock full of cliches. To the point where I can sit there and predict what a character is going to say next. But occasionally I have been taken by surprise. I mean, no one can predict that a character is going to say, son of a camel. And there are a couple of gems in there. Um, I quite liked... You suspect foul play? This is Nottingham! There is no other kind of play! But perhaps this is because I know Nottingham. And there really isn't. The biggest problem that I have, always will have, and always have had with this series are is that it doesn't know what genre it's supposed to be from one, one episode to the next. I mean, it'll be medievaling along quite merrily. And yes, I did just use medieval as a verb. And then Marion will turn up sporting a quiff, much like mine in my last review of this series. Advertising Maybelline and generally dressed like an Edwardian trollop. 
Why go to the bother of constructing authentic looking sets when you're going to let Robin loose on them in a hoodie? If it's a historical show, make it look historical. All of it. Consistency. That is what the show lacks. And if it's a modern adaptation, set it here and now. Just have Robin posting emo poetry on his MySpace and be done with it. According to the credits, this series was co-produced with BBC America. I am not surprised. The storylines have become increasingly ambitious, i.e. insane. Fake plague, a casino in the forest, invincible magic armour. I mean, in medieval Britain, the most exciting thing that's likely to happen to you is your hideously gruesome death. And I know this is a TV series, so they have to give the audience something interesting to watch. But it's like they think the only way we'll be interested is if they hit us with a huge, dramatic, implausible sledgehammer of a plot. But you know what? I have a confession to make. I have become rather fond of this programme. Yes, the subtitles are still here and treating us like idiots. Yes, the arrows are still making that ridiculous whooshing noise. Whoosh! Yes, there are historical inaccuracies so wild that sometimes it feels like the whole show has been designed by teenagers who don't care what Marion is wearing as long as they can find it in Topshop. Yes, it's corny, yes, it's cheesy, and yes, the whole experience can sometimes be likened to a guitar string snapping and hitting you in the eye. But despite all of this, and a load of other things it would take far too long to mention, I no longer feel like I am wasting my life watching it. This series simply makes me smile. Okay, so sometimes I'm laughing at rather than with, but I'm still laughing. I can sit there thinking, what the hell, and then still smile at the end of it. Though it is undoubtedly and unashamedly hypocritical of me to say so, sometimes you just have to stop analysing stuff. The whole series is much better if you just enjoy it. Just let it all wash over you like a big flood of crazy. Treat it as escapism, like watching reality TV. It's not the most intelligent thing you're going to spend 45 minutes watching, but it's also not going to give you nightmares, which is nice. And I know, all of this sounds like a big contradiction compared to my last review, but of course it is. A year has passed. And maybe I'm going soft in my old age, but despite how much this series frustrates me, enough to make me rant about it on YouTube and thereby starting an irreversible chain of TV criticism. I do find the show, as a whole, to be rather endearing. It entertains me, it makes me smile, and if I'm in the right frame of mind, I am very happy to watch it. So if you're a fan of Robin Hood, good for you. Just don't take the show too seriously, okay? At the end of the day, it's only one more guy prancing around Nottingham with a lethal weapon and a gang. But still, Ditch the subtitles, and the hoodie, and the Maybelline, and the hair products, and the PVC, and much is extraordinarily gay waistcoat.